So Martin De is finally off to Manchester United. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty sad about it. Welcome back to the video on the channel, Newcastle fans. If you are new to Black White Bandit, you've randomly just stumbled across us on YouTube, drop us one of these, just a little like, gets us quite far up that search bar. And make sure you get us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And also, if you like my opinion, which I'm hoping you might, you'll be notified every single time a video gets posted if you just hit that subscribe button. So thank you very much for that. If you haven't already done it, done it do it. So I'm still recovering from last night's excruciating last minute goal at Anfield from Liverpool. The lads played absolutely out of their skins, could not be prouder of them. Um, and we just didn't deserve that. We didn't deserve eight minutes to be on the watch. That should never have happened. And no way on this earth did we deserve to come away with no points at all. But I'm proud as punch of the lads in plenty to build on. Just still a little bit angry from that. But hey, it's deadline day to day to day. I've had tran uh, the transfer uh, window on in the background all day just to see whether there's any incomings. Keith Downey keeps teasing us. But one deal that has finally gone through, as we expected to, because he hasn't been in the last couple of match day squads, Martin Dubravka is finally off to Manchester United. Ugh. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I like Manchester United in any way. It's probably one of my most hated teams in the country. So to see any player of ours go to them and strengthen them in any way does make me a little bit physically sick. Just uh, for personal reasons, because that is a team that I really, really dislike. But I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sad to see this one go through. I've sort of held off doing a video on it until the news was confirmed. And I think Martin Dubravka has to go down for me as one of our best signings of the last 10 years. I honestly believe that. Here we are, uh, five years after he signed in, in 2018, 130 appearances later. Numerous, numerous saves that have kept us points and saved us in matches, to be totally honest. I think Martin Dubravka is the goalkeeper that maybe started to get a reputation with Newcastle fans as being error-prone, which I think, if you look at his stats, is a little bit harsh. I really do. Yes, he went through spells, uh, particularly in the 1920 season, where errors were starting to pop up more frequently. But I think to say that he was a very, very error-prone goalkeeper is just way, way, way off the mark. I don't think Martin Dubravka, by any means, has ever been the finished article of a goalkeeper. I think his distribution's pretty poor. I think he's, he's com he's how he commands his box, very similar to Shea Given, if I'm being totally honest. I'm not comparing the two, because Shea Given's obviously a legend how long he was with us of recent times. But I do feel like, very similar in terms of that, that commanding of his own area from any type of set piece, Martin Dubravka... Never filled me with confidence on that, and you never really felt like any distribution out of his box to any player on the field was ever that great. But a fantastic shot stopper, and don't forget, we picked him up for what four million in 2018 after he'd obviously been on loan from Slavia Prague. An absolute bargain. So you've got to take that into consideration as well. And generally speaking, he's been absolutely safe as houses for us. Um, now, this move, I don't overly understand it from a Newcastle perspective. Now, the first thing it tells me that Eddie Howe has never been a fan of Martin Dubravka. So if you remember, in January, just after Eddie Howe had come in, we were strongly linked with Dean Henderson to bring him in in that window. And I do think there was some truth in that because he kept on coming back again and again and again. Obviously, Martin Dubravka was still number one whilst we saw out last season, which he contributed a lot to, which I'll touch on in a second. But as soon as the windows opened, we brought in Nick Pope. So Eddie Howe, when he came into the football club, didn't never, ever, ever saw Martin Dubravka as his number one. And I don't know what the reason for that might be. Maybe it is... I don't think it's a distribution thing because Nick Pope, although I'm not judging him off the five games he's played for us so far, I don't think distribution is Nick Pope, Pope's biggest strong point. I think he's very similar in terms of he's a fantastic shot stopper. Um, and again, I'm not going to compare the two because it's I haven't watched enough of Nick Pope with Burnley. We are only talking about a goalkeeper five games into his Newcastle career against the goalkeeper who's played 130 games for us. So, from our point of view, I think this move weakens us on the last day of the window. Carl Darlow is obviously going to, going to become our number two. but obviously he played at Tranmere in the Cup game. I do think Martin Dubravka is a much better goalkeeper than Carl Darlow. I know they've fought for the number one in previous years. So it makes us weaker. So we are leaving the window in the goalkeeping area, in my opinion, 
not as strong as we were 24 hours ago. From a from a Manchester United point of view, from a Martin Dubravka point of view, I mean, David De Gea at Man United, although I've never been his biggest fan for the last four or five years, I know he's starting to redeem himself a little bit and get back to some decent form. He's a part of the furniture at Man United. And I don't think David De Gea or his agent or his representatives are ever going to allow him to be number two for that football club. He is literally one of their most experienced, highest paid players. So Martin Dubravka, which has been obviously heavily spoken about, is essentially moving from bench warming to bench warming. He's going from one bench to another. So I think from his point of view, yes, you need some self-belief. So I've got no doubts about it. Dubravka thinks he can break into that Man United team by impressing in training. But he is going to be a substitute for them. I don't think he's going to start their next match um, at the weekend once he's trained with the players. I think he's going to be their cup keeper. He's going to stand in for injuries to David De Gea potentially. And unless David De Gea has some awful, awful games back to back to back to back, I don't think he's going to get a sniff in the Premier League. So then I started thinking about why Martin Dubravka would maybe want that. Well, as much as I would love to say Martin Dubravka is a huge Newcastle fan, he has been all of his life. As a kid, growing up in Slovakia, I've got no doubt Manchester United's appeal worldwide. They will be a heavily supported team in that country, as they are everywhere in the world. And he probably dreamt as a kid, probably watched the Premier League growing up and thought, wow, can I play for Manchester United one day? And trust me, Newcastle fans, it pains me to say that on a video because I hate that football club so much. Uh, don't take it personally, any Man United fans watching this. We all have teams we don't like. One of them for me is Man United. So, Dubravka probably has that wow factor with Man United, even though, yes, they're not the same club that they were five, six, seven years ago in their current regime. Things are an absolute shit tip over there, if I'm being brutally honest. But he probably has aspirations that he can break into that team. Now, money, I don't know whether he's potentially going to move on to more of that. I've got no doubts Dubravka's agent will also have a bit of pull um, and probably is wanting to move a club of that size, without a doubt. Uh, there's a £6 million fee if they want to sign him in uh, at, the at the end of this season. There's a £2 million loan fee. So we've, I'm glad we've got our next. Man United absolutely stiffed us with Jesse Lingard last January. Another reason I wasn't keen for him to go. But the only thing I can also think of is Martin Dubravka has been our number one for so many years now. It must leave a bit of taste in your mouth for some guy like Nick Pope to just walk in and take your gloves. And I think that, that must have filled him with hell. And I get that. So if I'm Martin Dubravka, someone coming in after I've done so much for the football club and just taking my seat at the table and me being banished down to number two, that must have pissed him off. So yes, he's put, going, to David, uh, going to Man United to be a number two there, but he's, he doesn't have that bit of taste that maybe he's Nick Pope in, uh, coming in demoting him as left at Newcastle. I don't know. These are all the reasons I think that this move might have happened. I'm glad we're getting some money for him. Um, but hey, I'm a huge Martin Dubravka fan. And as I said at the start of the video, he's one of our best signings in the last 10 years, I honestly believe. 130 games, some of his standout performances for me over the years. Man United on his debut when we won 1-0. Absolute man of the match in his first ever game in the Premier League. Even more recently, uh, Leeds in January, January at Ellen Road when we won 1-0. And our huge... Huge transformation game for me under Eddie Howe because we went on that long unbeaten run after that. He was he was amazing. We we kept them out. We should he shut up shop. Would not let Leeds through the door. Southampton when when we beat them two one at uh, when Bruno scored the back heel. He was fantastic in that game. And I think some football fans have short memories. This is a great goalkeeper. The Wolves game. Nil nil down at the Molyneux uh, down in Molyneux in two thousand and twenty. He was absolutely outstanding. There's so many times this guy has saved us and he's consistently been our number one for four seasons. Four seasons? Four seasons now and he was four million. An unknown, no disrespect to him, from, from Slavia Prague. So I'm sad to see him go. I'd, I'd just like to, not that he's ever going to watch one of these videos, of course. Hey, who knows in a few years, but I think we all need to Give Martin a pat on the back. I don't think he's ever going to play for us again. I know things can change in football, but I don't see that happening. He's already said his goodbyes on Instagram. Fantastic servant for the club. I'd love to say I wish him well at Man United, but I don't because I don't like Man United. But this is a guy who we are losing, who's not only making our squad weaker, but we are losing a guy who has been a fantastic footballer for Newcastle United. 
So Eddie Howe's obviously not a fan. I think it does weaken us, but I've got to assume that Martin Dubravka really wanted this move. And after four years of service, good luck to the bloke. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments, Newcastle fans, on Dubravka leaving. Do you think it makes sense? Do you, do you think he'll break into Man United's team? Because I just see him as, as moving from bench to bench. Maybe Man United have, have nicer seats at Old Trafford. Maybe have, they have heated seats. I don't know. Um, but let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, give us one of these. Give us a like. Drop us a subscribe. So if you like this video, you'll be notified when another one gets posted out. And hopefully, in less than 24 hours, I'm doing another video, even maybe tonight, on some transfer activity for Newcastle on players coming in. Fingers crossed, we don't know, there's still time to go. Anything can happen um, under this new ownership with the money that we have. So I'll maybe see you for a transfer video on the next one. If not, Crystal Palace at the weekend. Sad to see the bloke go. Martin Dubravka's out. How are the lads anyway? See you on the next one. <laughs>